All right, the Lantern Corps theme park part two. If you haven't seen the first part, click the I in the top right or go to the first line of the description. In that episode, we covered the entrance to the park, which is going to be Earth, the Green Lantern Corps planet of Oa, and the Star Sapphire's home planet, Xamaron. In this episode, we're going to cover another three lands, so stay tuned. The next land following the Star Sapphire's planet of Xamaron is the Red Lantern's home planet of Ismalt. Ismalt is a mostly barren planet, with most of its prominent features being its gray rock surface, blood ocean, and volcanoes. In case you haven't noticed yet, the blood ocean isn't just like a nickname, it literally is an ocean of blood. Now obviously in the theme park, the blood ocean isn't going to actually be made of blood, it's going to be made to look like blood using red water coloring paint. Since I've already mentioned the blood ocean, let's start with the ride that will be located in the ocean. For this ride, guests would enter into a cave, where they would encounter an animatronic of Skalix, a member of the Red Lantern Corps, holding an AK-47 and surrounded by piles of firearms from Earth. Skalix explains to the guests that unlike his Red Lantern brethren, he's a big fan of Earth culture, their firearms in particular. By the way, this is canon. Uh, Skalix actually does have a big uh, obsession with firearms, so keep that in mind. This all being said, he's willing to give the people of Earth tours of Ismalt in return for them giving him a good chunk of firearms from the military. But he warns the guests that the other Red Lanterns aren't as fond of the humans as he is. At the station, guests find Skalix's touring vehicle, which just so happens to be a raft placed in the blood ocean. This river rapids ride will take place completely inside, as the best way to simulate the color of the blood ocean for the purposes of this ride would be through lights in the water and above the water. Of course, we don't want to use the water coloring for this because we don't want people to get stained by the water coloring when they get splashed. The ride would consist of guests encountering lava flowing down from volcanoes, Belize, one of the lieutenants of the Red Lantern Corps, attacking their vehicle and spitting blood on them, and also with the final encounter of the ride being a giant animatronic of the enraged Atrocitus, the leader of the Red Lantern Corps, and his house cat companion, Dexstar. After this encounter would be the largest drop of the ride that would lead to the end of the ride. On the opposite side of the blood ocean would be a space shot ride located within a volcano. Just in case you don't know what a space shot ride is, it's basically a ride that is uh, set up like a drop tower, except instead of taking you up slowly and dropping you using gravity, it launches you upwards and then has you come down slowly. An example of this type of ride would be Doctor Doom's Fearfall at Islands of Adventure. So the ride in this theme park would basically have you entering the volcano, being launched up out of the volcano as if it was erupting, and it would spit water onto the guests on the ride as well as some of the guests uh, standing below at the base. Another attraction that would exist in this land would be a restaurant that would be housed in a red metal dome that would spit fire out of the top of it. The restaurant would sell foods consisting of primarily bloody meats like beef, pork, and chicken. So essentially, this place would be a vegetarian or vegan's worst nightmare. Also, there would be signature drinks focused around blood, as the Red Lanterns drink blood in order to regain power and energy. These drinks could range from being kid-friendly fruit punches to alcoholic Bloody Marys. Within the restaurant would also be a store that would sell Red Lantern merchandise, meat lovers merchandise, and of course, beef jerky. Right next to the meat dome would be a cavern that housed part of the blood ocean within it. Within this cavern would be a bumper boat style ride in which guests would hop into a bumper boat and start spitting blood at them while also having other red lanterns surrounding the area spitting blood on them as well. These would include Zilius Zox and Fury Six, as well as some other Red Lantern Corps members. The final attraction of this land would be a meet and greet with the leader of the Red Lanterns himself, Atrocitus. This meet and greet would take place in the center of the blood ocean, in front of the Red Lantern central power battery, where Atrocitus' throne is located. This meet and greet would include Atrocitus just kind of being overall rude to you, but also kind of in a funny way as well, you know, kind of being a little, little playful there, of course. There would also be one walk-around character in this land. That character would be a puppet version of the house cat Dexstar, who we see on the River Rapids ride. 
A cast member dressed as a Red Lantern would walk around with the puppet, controlling it and giving Dexstar life. At night in this land, Skalix would come out as a walk-around character adorning his alien firearms. He would position himself on Atrocitus' throne and fire off firearms into the sky, creating a fireworks display for the planet. Of course, after this nighttime show, guests would be able to meet with Skalix on Atrocitus' throne. That is it for Ismalt, so we are going to move on to the Blue Lantern Corps planet of Odom. Odom is an Earth-like planet full of lush beauty and unrestrained life. When two guardians of the universe, Gantha and Sade, came to Odom to create the Blue Lantern Corps, they decided not to colonize the planet in favor of leaving its natural beauty and life mostly untouched. The only change they made to the planet was installing the Blue Lantern Central Power Battery. The Blue Lantern since have respected this decision, and as a result, so will us Earthlings visiting the planet. But make no mistake, there will be attractions in this land. However, we're going to go about making them in a way that makes them seem natural as if they were kind of there already, basically. Or very little was done to create said attraction. The first will be a quiet and relaxing boat ride through the vaguely familiar yet alien landscape of Odom. While on this ride, guests will encounter the world's several variations of Earth's planets and animals. This will be pretty similar to the Navi River journey at Animal Kingdom, but will be much shorter as to prevent the immense boredom that accompanies that ride and will take place completely outside. The second ride in the land will be an aerial carousel style ride that would take place in a secluded spring and would have guests riding the many different flying creatures of the planet, while also being splashed by or spit on by other water-dwelling creatures in the spring below. In case you're wondering what an aerial carousel ride is, that's basically what Dumbo is, and it's also what One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish is at Islands of Adventure. The third ride in the land would be a swing ride that would have the swings look like they are vines and would have the center of the ride look like it's a tree to make it look like you're just swinging around on vines. Like this isn't actually an attraction, this is just something that's, you know, there already that you're just kind of enjoying. There will also be a restaurant that will have solely outdoor seating and would have food and drinks served at the side of a fallen tree trunk with massive vines surrounding it. Guests would be eating on tables made from giant mushrooms and flowers while sitting on tree stumps and toadstools. See what I did there? Stools, toadstools. This theming will allow the planet to still seem uncolonized and untouched, while also allowing its overall immersion to stay intact. This restaurant would of course only sell vegan food and drink, as killing any of the animals on the planet would go against the Blue Lantern's founder's decision to keep the planet untouched. This is also a way to please vegan guests after traumatizing them with the meat lover's paradise on Ismalt. The final location in the land would be a store, located in the base of a giant tree, that would sell Blue Lantern merchandise. As to keep the theming consistent, all the shelves, counters, and racks would be made up of roots, vines, and bark. There would also be two walk-around characters in this land. One would be the very first Blue Lantern chosen by the Guardians of the Universe, Saint Walker, who just so happens to be my personal favorite Lantern of all time for his overall perseverance through the many tragedies and trials he has experienced in his life, but that's a story for another day. The other walk-around character would be the second Blue Lantern, Worth, whom was actually selected to be part of the Corps by St. Walker himself. That is all for the Blue Lantern Corps' home planet of Odom. We are now going to move on to the planet that crashed next to Odom, which is the home of the Indigo tribe, Nock. Nock is a mostly jungle planet with dark grass and dirt on the surface. Amongst the dark jungle, there are two stone spire buildings. Also hidden within the jungle would be a marketplace style store where an Indigo Tribe member would be selling Indigo Tribe merchandise. Since the Indigo Tribe is the Lantern Corps of Compassion, if guests asked the merchant for a gift, he would give them a foam Indigo Tribe ring for free. Of course, he wouldn't just give you the foam ring, he would also give you a stamp if you so asked for one on your passport. In one of the aforementioned stone spire buildings would be the Indigo Tribe Central Power Battery, surrounded by statues of the Guardians of the Universe. Here guests can meet Natromo, the custodian of the Indigo Tribe Central Power Battery, and one of the founders of the Indigo Tribe. 
Due to his small stature, I imagined he would be sitting on top of a pile of rocks and would either be an animatronic or a puppet. In the second stone spire building would be a prison. This prison has been on Nock even before the Indigo tribe was formed, but they still keep it around as they use it to temporarily imprison criminals they look to convert to compassionate members of the Indigo tribe. Just in case you didn't know, every member of the Indigo tribe is a former criminal that has become compassionate through the power of the Indigo tribe power ring. When guests first enter this building, they'd be greeted by a statue of Abin Sur, a former Green Lantern who actually helped create the Indigo tribe, as well as many of the other Lantern cores. There'd be plenty of walk around characters surrounding this statue. These would include the leader of the Indigo tribe, Erok, or better known as Indigo One, Monk, also known as Indigo 2, and Craven. So long as you are nice to them, they will be the nicest people you meet in the park. But if you are rude and mean to them, then they may consider converting you to an Indigo tribe member in order to have you show some compassion. Of course, this would just be a bit of banter to further immerse the guests in the land. Also inside the prison would be an Omnimover ride that would take guests up and throughout the prison. While on this ride, guests would encounter many alien criminals in their prisons, as well as some Indigo tribe members converting those criminals. We would see here that the conversion process is extremely painful, and that many criminals would cry profusely afterwards, citing the guilt they feel from committing the crimes as the reason why. There would even be a scene where Indigo tribe members would scan you to see if you need to be converted. Of course, after seeing the pain and suffering the criminals went through, it is safe to say most guests do not want to be converted and are probably shaking in their boots at this point. Ultimately though, the scan turns up negative as all of the guests who come to the park clearly exemplify great compassion, so why would, why would they need to get converted, right? Come on. Anyways, there would be no restaurant in this land, as I imagine most guests don't want to eat prison grub, so that'll be all for this land. That all being said, that is going to be it for part two of the Lantern Core theme park. We have one part left where I will cover the last two lands of the park, which is of course going to be the Sinestro Core as well as the Orange Lantern Core. So be sure to check in for those and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.